all this holding. Of course, Bobby no, get caught. No, you better not. He, you oh, better no. not. I told your ass. I told. I told your ass. God damn you it, son shit. of a fucking bitch. Are you bro. serious? Wait, bro. Wait. What the fuck? I think I'm leaving. Well, it's safe to say that uh, we won't be probably checking out any more WWE live stream and reactions on the In the Clutch page. I, I think that was the last time for. For a while, for quite some time, for the foreseeable future on the In The Clutch page. Um, yeah, Dub's over it. And you know what? I understand. True Billy's over it. You know what? I understand. And I'm kind of over it. And I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Let's get into what happened at WWE Day 1. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it here with another video. Um, WWE Day One was uh, interesting to say the least, at especially how it ended. Uh, before I get into my uh, <laughs> my rant, I'm, I'm gonna probably be ranting in this video because there's certain things it just doesn't make sense to do from a storytelling standpoint and how certain things play out. I'm gonna get into that, but I want to at least talk about the positives i want to don't want to be too overly negative and i will say there were some positives on this show i think it's without saying the usos versus um the new day was a fantastic match easily or probably match of the night outside of the last match ending but for the most part match of the night for i, I i'm willing to get that guess a lot of people they got that crowd hyped. It was fantastic. I figured it was going to be a good match. The Usos, New Day, they always have great matches. They've had great matches for years. They carry the uh, the SmackDown division or, or whatever division they're on. They carry it because they know how to do some good tag team wrestling. I wish there was more tag teams in both divisions. I honestly think they should unify that division because there's not enough legitimate tag teams uh, in WWE, so um, I think they should unify the divisions, but they are killing it, and I expected them to kill it. It was a great showing, and I enjoyed that match. Me, Dub, and uh, Trivia, we enjoyed it while watching it. The crowd enjoyed it. It was a great way to start the show. Um, I didn't care for the Drew McIntyre, um, uh, what's that dude? Uh, Madman Moss or Shab, I, I don't even care. I didn't really too much care about it. Their backstage segment after Drew won the match was more entertaining than that. But even then, I don't, I don't care about the happy Corbin and all that. I, I don't care. It was, it was straight filler for me. It was restroom break, food break match. So I didn't really too much care about that. Um, RK, RK bro versus. Uh, the Street Profits was enjoyable. I think having Amigos out there for the crowd, the Atlanta crowd, kind of, you know, just made it a little bit fun entrance-wise. But it was enjoyable. I enjoyed that match. Uh, I figured RK Bro was going to uh, retain. Um, but it was it was, it was was decent. It was okay. Um, the Becky Lynch versus Liv Morgan match, that was kind of a, a weird one. Um, I know I'm not going in order, but I felt like... Well, one, the ending got botched because apparently she was supposed to cheat again. But she actually, Becky Lynch actually won clean. She accidentally, I want to say she accidentally won clean because she was trying to put her foot on her ropes. But she wasn't close enough to the actual ropes. So she ended up winning the match clean accidentally because she was supposed to cheat again to set up a, another third match. So I don't know how they're going to do this, but she was actually supposed to cheat um the match was okay crowd was you know behind live a lot of people are behind live um would i have loved to see um live as the champion yes i would have liked that i think a lot of people would have liked that i'm not sure if they're gonna ever pull the trigger on her so we'll see but it was a kind of a it was a run of a road women's championship match it, it wasn't bathroom break inducing 
or nothing like that, but it was just one of those things where it was like, it was okay. You just really wanted to see if they were going to actually pull the trigger. They didn't, and they kind of botched the ending. So I'm not sure where they go with this Liv Morgan uh, situation since she actually did lose Queen, and it's on camera. Don't know how they're going to fix that. Um, but we'll see if they uh, if she ends up having another opportunity at um, Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's uh, Championship. Um what's another match that happened on the show oh of course miz versus edge now i will say i love edge entrance with the brew mixing it with his entrance uh oh there was it's always good to see that um that match started off okay it did it it kind of turned into a traditional miz match In my opinion this is probably one of the boring the mo it's definitely the boring the most boring match that Edge has had since he came back to WWE. There's no denying it. And it's not because of Edge. It's it's really because of Miz and his in-ring work. It's, it's just, it's not, his moveset is not, for me personally, it's not that exciting. It's never been really that exciting. It's always been, it's very safe. And there's nothing wrong with being safe, but you also want to bring some excitement to it. it it wasn't that exciting at all. It just wasn't for me personally. It, it got, it got, it got really, you know, predictable with, you know, his wife going to cheat. But it was cool to see Beth Phoenix come out there, support her man, support her husband. And I was glad that Edge got the win. So we can be one and done. There doesn't need to be no rematch. One and done. The feud is over. Go fight someone, someone that's going to really be <laughs> more entertaining in the ring. Like, uh, it, 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 damn near anybody else. <laughs> I'd rather him fight. I would love to see um, AJ Styles go against uh, Edge. That would be pretty cool. You know, comment down below. Let me know who y'all think Edge should go against next. Because I'm willing to bet that that match will probably be a lot more entertaining than what we got with the Miz. So, uh, but I'm glad he got the win. The match was it was pretty much mid. It was it wasn't anything that I will even remember about any match you know like i'll remember certain matches from edge you know return that's not one of them i'm gonna remember at all it's just it's not that memorable um and now we get to the meat and potatoes we get to the part of the video that y'all want to see that y'all want to hear me talk about and rant about first things first i want to say uh i want to send prayers to uh, roman reigns he caught covid this is why the Universal Championship match was canceled between him and Brock Lesnar. So I want to wish him a speedy recovery. Um, COVID is a serious thing and people have lost their lives from it. So I'm, you know, sending prayers and you guys should send your well wishes to Roman, you know, because that's a serious thing. And hopefully it's not, he's not really suffering too much of the serious symptoms and uh, we can get him back sooner rather than later. Because I'm going to be honest with you, SmackDown needs him. Smackdown needs him more than ever right now, but we'll get into that later. So, wishing Roman a speedy recovery. So, get that out the way. So, before the show, like maybe a few hours before the show was supposed to air, you guys were flooding my DMs, flooding my inbox. Roman got COVID, so they added Brock to the Fatal Four Way, making it a Fatal Five Way match. Now, immediately, I knew. That was going to rub some people the wrong way. It kind of rubbed me the wrong way. It definitely did not make uh, <laughs> uh, Dub happy to hear that news. Brandon was shocked as well. Um, only because it's like, imagine as a competitor and as a story stand standpoint, and just those wrestlers in general, imagine them storyline-wise doing all they can to get into this WWE Championship match only to hear Brock is just added because he's Brock and the person he's supposed to fight is sick or is, can't fight. So it's Brock. Brock can do whatever he wants. We got to make sure Brock does something. So we're going to put him in this match. Now, I get it the way Brock's contract is set up. I'm sure he has set dates that he show up to. They pay him money. They pay him good money. He doesn't show up to everything. They pay him good money. He shows up, does a little bit of work. And he goes back home. Literally, that's literally how his contract set up. So, it would have been one of those things where WWE would have just been paying him money 
to show up for free. So I'm pretty sure they, you can tell the way the match was structured. They pulled a big audible. This was not how that match was supposed to end. You can just tell. So they pulled the audible. We're gonna add you to this match. I'm gonna add you to this match. And it's just one of those things where it's like, it comes off as WWE, AKA Vince. He goes back to the same well over and over and over. Well, we got Brock. We might as well use him. You know what? We're going to put him in another championship match. And that's not even the worst part of it. So, in my head, I'm thinking what, what would be cool is if now that they know Brock is here, he's going to be in their match. And a lot of, you know, of course, people don't, you know, doesn't feel like he should. He deserves to be there. He didn't do anything to get in that match. He just was gifted to him. I would take that personally from a story standpoint and have everybody just attack him. Put your differences aside, attack him, eliminate him, and y'all have your fatal four-way. That, that would have been something cool storyline-wise. And they tried to do that a little bit, but it didn't work. The match itself was what I expect. I was expecting it to be just with the fatal four-way. Intense, high action. It was crazy. It was becoming easily the best match of the night because of the energy. The crowd was live. The, there were so many spots going on at once. It was great. People were having their good showing. Like It was great. Leading up to the ending, that shit was enjoyable. And then we get to the ending. Big E doing his thing. And I, I really just want to say Big E really got the short end of the stick of this WWE title reign. I'll talk about it after we get to the, the real meat and potatoes when things just jump, just go off the rail. Big E's doing this thing, right? Big E's doing this thing in ring, clearing everybody out, whatnot. Um, and then I want to say Brock Lesnar pulls the old age, the the... The traditional, someone gets beaten up in a match and they lay down for the entire match only for them to get superpowers and start F5-ing everybody. That's literally what he was doing. He's F5-ing. Big E had just went on a tear, hitting his finisher move. So I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe Big E, they're going to show him some love. He's going to hit his finishing move on Brock. He may not count him out, but he's going to hit his finishing move at least. Nope. Brock countered it, turned into an F5, one F5. And um, became the new WWE champion. And he pinned the former WWE champion. I got to break this down into layers. First of all, giving him the championship for me personally was a no. That, that, I, it just does not make sense to give him the championship. People are saying, oh, they're trying to build up with something with him and Bobby. I'm sorry. That doesn't need a championship for that to happen at WrestleMania. I'm gonna just be honest with you. It does, it did not need him winning and pinning the former WWE champion for him to have a match with Bobby Lashley. You didn't need to do that. Like that, that, that's there's ways to get around that. You feel me? Second. Imagine someone coming into the match that wasn't even slated to be in that match only to barely wrestle. They barely wrestled, did a couple suplexes, took a couple bumps, laid outside for the rest of the match only to come back in in the last few minutes of the match, F5 everybody, and win. The, everybody else is doing everything else. He's laying out on the mat, you know, out on the outside. And then he comes back in and fires everybody and wins a match that he wasn't even supposed to be in. That right there is a slap in the face to all the other competitors that was in that match, in my personal opinion, and anyone in the locker room. Because it's like, well, you're not Brock, so you don't get that luxury. What what type of hell? What? That's second. Third, pinning the WWE champion. Why? Why, pinning the former WWE champion. Why? He could have pinned anybody else. If you wanted to set up something with Bobby Lashley, don't don't pin him. You could pin Kevin Owens. If you wanted to keep Seth Rollins strong, you could easily pin Kevin Owens or vice versa. You could pin Seth Rollins. They have history. There's ways you you someone else could have been pinned if you wanted to give him the belt. But you pin Big E. What is up with Brock Lesnar in the 
in the new day. He got Kofi the fuck up out of there. Got him the, got him out of there with the WWE Championship. Big E got him out of there. What is up with him? In, what is up with him in the new day? He's just, it's like the new day win. I'm pinning them motherfuckers and beating their ass with ease. Like what the? It just, it literally, not to say that Big E's title reign has been anything of, of, of notoriety, because it actually hasn't. I'm going to be honest with you. It sucks that his title reign will not really be remembered like that. His title reign was super lackluster, and that sucks. That really does suck. I don't think this is really on him. That's on WWE's booking of him and the people that he's been fighting. The opponents he's been fighting hasn't... It, 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 Oh man, that sucks. That really does suck. So that's that's one. Two, his title reign don't mean jack shit anymore because he literally lost it in the in the fashion that he lost it in. It just that it just shits on his title reign, in my personal opinion. Oh yeah, he lost to Brock Lesnar, but how he lost? The dude took one F five and was done. Yeah, he was dealing with other stuff, bro. But he had some momentum and he took one F five and he was out of there. He was out of there. He didn't need to eat the pit. That's all I'm saying. You could have kept, that would have at least kept his character strong. But he didn't need to eat the pit. I mean, that's all I'm saying. That's that's my personal opinion on that. Y'all can disagree with me on that one, but Biggie eating the pin in that match, even if Brock wasn't in it, Biggie eating the pin in that match, regardless, really doesn't. It, it diminishes his overall title run because it's like, well, shit, you know what I'm saying? He ends up eating the pit. Unless you're going to build up somebody else outside of him. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he needed to eat the pin. There's other people that could have ate that pin. And at least it would have, you know, gave some type of dignity to Big E's title reign. So that's that in itself is just quite confusing, quite frustrating that Big E's title reign, title reign ended because someone else ended up catching COVID and then they just insert him in the match because it's Brock Lesnar. So that kind of sucks. Um, I will say this. Um, I don't know how anybody can be excited about this. It's like people have forgotten what it was like when he was the Universal Champion, what it was like when he was the WWE Champion on Raw. You didn't see him much. He wasn't on the show much. He was pretty much gone. He would be on the show every now and then. And then after that, you know what I'm saying? He'd be, he'd be back at home because that's his schedule. At least with Roman, you see him every other week. He's on the show. Not with Brock. He's not going to be on the show like that. And then what's the point of whoever he faces? Someone saying, oh, maybe he'll face Big E at the Royal Rumble. Does it matter? It doesn't matter who he faces. We know he's not dropping the belt until the, till WrestleMania. So he's going to be holding the belt hostage for the next few months. That's how you want to start your year off. I, people don't understand. There is the reason why I, I don't want Brock to be winning titles anymore because you're not going to see the championship on the show because he doesn't like to travel. Simple as that. So Raw, essentially, they, they may see him on Monday, this upcoming Monday, and then that'll probably be it. They may see him one more time, maybe before the Royal Rumble, and they may not even see him until the Royal Rumble. What the? Why? And that's why I was confused. Why people are so excited, bro. Y'all don't realize y'all not going to see it unless he agrees unless he's okay with traveling you're not going to see him that much and I'm not saying you got to see a, the champion every single week I understand that but at the same time you got to see the champion and that's Brock's schedule so that automatically was just like what the fuck and then the let my last point I want to make my last little rant is like I said earlier they go they go back to the to the same well, and it's like you have all these talented wrestlers. You let go all these talented wrestlers last year to only keep pushing the same guy you've been pushing over and over and over. 
a part-timer that's not going to be there. At least with Roman, his gimmick is working. And we got tired of WWE trying to push him for years, but at least his gimmick is working. And we see him. And he's been putting on some pretty good matches the past year. Brock? What's the fucking point? You're just going to keep going to Brock? When you have all these talented individuals that you have on the pre-show, that you have in bullshit, boring matches, when, at what point will WWE Vince McMahon understand that you can't keep going to Brock, you can't keep going to Goldberg and expecting to build new stars? You can't. I don't. I don't know what it's gonna take. It makes no sense. It don't and I'm sorry if you defend this <clears throat> you're part of the problem because at the end of the day you're gonna keep defending Vince choosing a part-timer over and over and over over the people he has I would have been okay with Seth winning I would have been okay with um Kevin Owens winning I would have been okay with Bobby Lashley if they wanted to give him a title run again I would have been okay if Big E retained it's at least the talent that we have on the roster. That's how you build them up. But instead, you give it to fucking Brock Lesnar, who wasn't even supposed to be in the match. That's blatantly showing the rest of the roster, it don't matter what you do. You're not Brock. You're not Roman. So it don't matter. You're not John Cena. It don't matter. And at what? what's the point then? What's the point? What's, what's the point of even trying to be better at your craft when ultimately someone like Brock can come in and just take the, the spotlight? All right, we're going to give the title to Brock. He didn't do anything to earn the title. We're going to give it to him. That's pretty much what they did. If you look at how they structured that match, that match, they, they, did, they pulled an audible right before that match. They were probably still working on the finish to that match. And basically like, all right, Brock, you're going to take a couple of spots. You're going to lay outside the ring. And then in the last few minutes of, of the match, you're going to F5 everybody and win. It's very disappointing. Like I said, like I said earlier, if you want to get Brock and Bobby in a match together, the, you, the, the championship doesn't have to be on the line. We should be all about building the stars you fucking have. But Vince doesn't want to do that. It's like he's afraid to. Maybe if you let them be the stars that we know them to be, I think you would find that you would be okay. You're in good hands. Like State Farm, you're in good hands. Just let them do their fucking job. Let them wrestle. Let them be the characters that they do to be instead of micromanaging their promos and everything else that they do. But nope, if you're not Brock, Roman, John Cena, it doesn't fucking matter. And that that is completely ass backward. And it's going to hurt WWE in the end. Mark my words. It may not be now. It may not be next year. It may not be even the year after next. But this is going to screw them over. Because guess what? Brock is not going to always want to wrestle. It doesn't matter how much money you throw at him. At some point, Brock will be like, I'm done. Roman's not staying forever. He's trying to go to Hollywood. So at some point, who else? John Cena already in Hollywood. He ain't going to be around. So who else? Who else you have? The talent that you have now, you're not trying to push them like you should be. And then the new talent that you do get, you end up pushing them out the door. I'm giving this show a 5 out of 10. A lot of mediocre matches. Some highlights, definitely. Usos and New Day. And the beginning of the championship, WWE Championship match. Before it went to a shit show. That ending really dropped it down. Could have easily gave it in a 6. 6 out of 10. Maybe a 7. But uh, I give it a 5 out of 10. Some of y'all would think, oh, you're just so hypercritical. There's no pleasing wrestling fans. I praise WWE when they do something right. Hell, one of my favorite pay-per-views from last year was the Crown Jewel. That shit was entertaining as hell. There has been some other good entertaining pay-per-views as well from last year. This, to start off the year, no. It was entertaining at some parts, but what they did at the end, it just shows to me, it shows to Dub, shows to Trill Billy, shows to a lot of people 
that Vince McMahon is going to do what, what Vince McMahon wants and he doesn't care about the his current stars like he should because if he did he would have either a not put him in that match or b have him win that match you can keep Brock strong without him pinning eating a pin and he didn't care he thinks it's going to be a ratings boost and people are going to check out raw now to see what Brock does but they once they realize he's not going to be in the show then then what and then Smackdown's fucked because they don't even have Brock no more so now what Unless he's going to float between shows, which I doubt. That requires more traveling. So, SmackDown's fucked. Roman's out for COVID. Who else does SmackDown have other than Drew? And they're doing a, a little kayfabe injury with him. So, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. It's WWE for you, man. They, they, they give you some highs, and then they do shit like this. And some of y'all will like this ending. Y'all okay with Brock being champ? Uh, me, personally, I'm just not, bro. Man, I'm... It's time for newer people to get those opportunities and build off of it. What's the point of giving Kofi Kingston the title just to not give, really do anything with him as the champ? That's WWE's creative, lack of creativity. So, and someone sent me some god awful, like, fantasy booking. He said, I forget, I don't, I've got exactly who it was, but they said in DMs, what, imagine if. Goldberg wins the Royal Rumble and he chooses to face Brock again. The thought of that. The actual thought of that will legitimately infuriate me. And at this point, with how WWE books things and how they just love them some part-timers, they just love them some Goldbergs and stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if they did it. Fuck all you new guys. We're going to give the Royal Rumble to Goldberg. He's going to win it. And he's going to face Brock again at WrestleMania. I, I, I don't put anything past WWE. I don't put anything past Vince. So that's my little rant. Hope you guys enjoyed this long video. That's my thoughts and opinions on WWE Day 1. Comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this pay-per-view? What do you rate this pay-per-view on the scale of 1 to 10? And also, uh, I, I got to really, got the fact that I have to even say this. Did you guys enjoy <laughs> Brock Lesnar becoming the WWE champion? Are you in favor of it? Or do you think this was literally a, a, a bad decision and it's going to ruin the overall product like I think it will? Comment down below, let me know. Appreciate all the love and support. Rhodes is 70k. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. And uh, see y'all on the next one. Peace.